On March 16, 2026, something extraordinary will happen in the skies above Jupiter. The interstellar object, known as 3I Atlas, will skim past the gas giant, a fleeting encounter at just over 53 million kilometers. And NASA has a plan. Far above Jupiter's clouds, an aging spacecraft called Juno is still circling the planet. Its mission was supposed to end in September 2025, a final dive into Jupiter's atmosphere. But a new idea has surfaced. What if, instead of dying in the giant's crushing clouds, Juno used its last drops of fuel for one final shot at history? It would be the first time in history a spacecraft has intercepted an interstellar visitor. No one has ever tried, and there will be no second chance. Opportunities like this don't happen twice. 3I Atlas is moving through our solar system at nearly 66 kilometers per second relative to Jupiter, over 148,000 miles per hour. Its path is set, its speed is relentless. And on March 16, 2026, it will pass through a point in space that by pure cosmic coincidence lies within striking distance of Juno's current orbit. But striking distance is a relative term. In space, even tens of millions of kilometers can mean the difference between a perfect intercept and watching your target vanish forever. Right now, Juno is locked in a long looping orbit around Jupiter, swinging from the outer edges of the magnetosphere to breathtaking close passes just a few thousand kilometers above the cloud tops. To meet 3I Atlas, it will need to break from that dance, bending its path to match the timing of the visitor's flyby. And here's the catch. The window to act closes in weeks. A carefully timed burn must happen by September 2025, just days before Juno's planned end of mission dive into Jupiter. Miss that, and the opportunity evaporates. The object will keep moving on a trajectory that will never again bring it this close to anything we can reach. This is why mission planners call it a one-shot intercept. The alignment of Jupiter, Juno, and a visitor from another star will not come again in our lifetimes. To catch 3I Atlas, Juno can't just point and thrust. The object is moving far too fast for a direct chase. Instead, mission planners are considering one of the boldest maneuvers in orbital mechanics, the Jupiter Oberth maneuver. When a spacecraft fires its engines deep in a planet's gravity well, at the very bottom of its orbital swing, the burn is far more efficient. The planet's pull adds to the spacecraft's velocity, turning the same amount of fuel into a much greater change in speed. For Juno, the plan would be this. On September 9, 2025, it would fire its main engine to drop into an even tighter pass around Jupiter. Just five days later, at a blistering 35 kilometers per second near the giant's cloud tops, it would burn again, using Jupiter's own gravity to fling itself outward toward the path of 3I Atlas. The total cost? 2.6755 kilometers per second of change in speed, almost exactly what Juno might still have in its tanks. With that, the spacecraft could arrive on March 14, 2026, just two days before 3I Atlas reaches its closest point to Jupiter, with just 110 kilograms of fuel barely 5% of its original supply. The spacecraft could close in to within 27 million kilometers of the interstellar visitor. Closer approaches demand far more fuel, pushing beyond what the probe can deliver. This concept isn't just speculation. It comes from a 2025 preprint study, intercepting 3I Atlas at closest approach to Jupiter with the Juno spacecraft, authored by Abraham Loeb, Adam Hibbard, and Adam Crowell. Their simulations outline multiple possible trajectories, from single burn slingshots to double impulse maneuvers that could shave down the fuel cost but increase the risk. No matter the path, the maneuver is unforgiving. It must be flawless. The burns must be timed to the second, and once Juno leaves Jupiter's embrace, there's no coming back. This is the Jupiter Oberth maneuver, a slingshot across the void aimed at a target from another star. If Juno makes the burn, 
If the jupiter oberth maneuver works, the spacecraft will not slow down to meet 3i Atlas face to face. It will not match speeds. Instead, the two will cross paths, a high-speed flyby in the cold dark above Jupiter's orbit, a fleeting moment when their trajectories intersect. The approach will be violent in its speed, but gentle in its intent. For minutes, maybe a handful of hours, Juno will stare at a fragment from another star system, a piece of matter that may have formed around a completely different sun under alien chemistry. Billions of years ago, instruments built to study Jupiter will be pushed to their limits. Juno Cam could attempt rapid, high-resolution imaging, capturing details in ice, rock, or dust plumes as the sunlight glints off the surface. The magnetometer could hunt for traces of an intrinsic magnetic field. The infrared mapper could detect temperature variations, signs of sublimating ices or internal heat. Even the radio science experiment could listen for subtle gravitational tugs, revealing the object's mass and density. These are data points we cannot get from Earth. Our telescopes will see 3i Atlas as a point of light. But Juno, racing past at thousands of kilometers per second, could turn that point into a world, a physical place, with textures, shadows, and a history written in its scars. And what if there's something unexpected? Oumuamua the first interstellar visitor we ever saw, behaved strangely, accelerating slightly, in ways we still debate. Could 3i Atlas do the same? Could it carry clues about the environments it passed through, or about how common life's building blocks might be between the stars? On July 31st, 2025, even Washington took notice, with Representative Anna Paulina Luna urging NASA to consider repurposing Juno for this chase. The message was simple. If we can do it, we should. Because this isn't just about a spacecraft and a rock from another star. It's about using the tools we have in the moment we have them to answer questions that may not come again in our lifetimes. Do we turn away or do we follow? The clock is ticking. This is what it comes down to. A window that opens once. A spacecraft with almost no fuel left. A traveler from another star that will not wait. If Juno fires, it aims for a moment, not a meeting, a fast pass, a few precious minutes when 3i Atlas crosses our field of view, enough to map ice and dust, enough to listen for a whisper of gas, enough to measure a tiny telling shift in motion. If we take the shot, we trade certainty for hope. We risk the last breath of a veteran probe to touch a question that has followed us since the first night sky. What is out there? how often it passes by, whether anyone ever meant to send anything at all. But this isn't just about 3i Atlas. It's about the rare privilege of standing at the edge of the known and choosing to step forward. Every interstellar object is a messenger, carrying the physics, chemistry, and history of a place we will never see. They are the only fragments of other solar systems that come to us uninvited, unplanned, and always fleeting. We can't send probes to every star. We can't explore every distant world. But sometimes, the universe sends one to us. And when that happens, the choice is clear. We either open the door or we let it pass into the dark, knowing it will never knock again. Exploration is not convenient. It's not efficient. It's not cheap. But it's the only way we've ever learned who we are and where we are in the vastness of space. And if we do nothing, 3i Atlas fades back into the dark and the silence wins. The chance does not return, not for us, maybe not for decades. We have always looked up and wondered if we were alone. Now, the universe has answered, not in words, but in a rare alignment of trajectories and time. It's not an invitation we can schedule again. It's not a promise, it's a fleeting knock at the door of our solar system, and it will only knock once. This is the line between silence and signal, between staying home and stepping out into the void, between watching a shadow drift away and daring to turn our instruments toward it. If you want to follow this chase into the dark, subscribe and leave a like. It keeps this signal alive. It tells the algorithm to let more people hear it. And if you want to do even more, there's now a way to stand closer to the heart of this project. 
By becoming a channel member, you help us keep searching the skies, telling these stories, and sending this signal further into the void. Right now, there are no exclusive benefits, only the shared knowledge that you are part of the crew that keeps this journey moving. But soon, we'll find ways to bring you something extra, something only our closest allies will see. Your support means we don't just watch the window close. We wait together for the moment when a distant visitor brushes past and the unknown finally speaks.